Hi and welcome to section 3 of the course where we're going to be taking a look at different examples on how we can use logic in protective relays. So we're going to begin with an example on how to use latches and relay push buttons to enable and disable certain protective functions or schemes. Now what we want to do for this example is to press a button in the relay to enable and disable a function, the same function. So we want to press it and then press it again to disable the same function. So we press it once, we enable it, we press it again, we disable it. So let's see how we can do that using logic. So for this, all we need is one latch, two AND gates, and one NOT gate. And our input to our logic scheme is going to be the push button of the relay. So this is going to be a physical push button on the relay that we're going to press on the front panel of the relay. And then the output is going to be just the status of the latch itself. So essentially we're going to be using this latch to control when we enable or disable certain functions within the relay. So let's go over the logic first just from a scheme point of view and then we'll see how we can program this into the relay itself. And then we're actually going to see this in action using an SEL421 relay. Alright, so I mentioned that essentially the input to our entire logic scheme is going to be a push button. So again, this is going to be a physical push button on the relay that we're going to press. And this is in the front panel of the relay. And again, we're going to see this here in a second in real life. But essentially, again, it's a push button that we're going to press. So it can go high or low. Whenever you press it, it goes high. Whenever you depress it, it goes low. Now, what I want to do here then is I want to add an edge trigger over here, a rising edge trigger that is, so that whenever we push the button, the output of this is going to be a pulse, essentially telling us that we press the button, but it's only going to go high whenever we press it, not when we depress it. That's important. And again, of course, we talked about this in a previous lecture where we went over how rising edge triggers work. All right, so what we can do here then is we can say, well, whenever we press the button, if the output of the latch is a logical zero, so we're going to feed that into this NOT gate over here, then we can end that with the pulse from the push button and feed that into the set of the latch. So let's go over how this works. Again, remember that here we're using the latch as the status itself. So this is the output of our logic. So I'm going to call this latch let's say latch one output so this over here is what we're going to be using to control functions within the relay so what we can do then is we can end the output of this latch with let's say for example an overcurrent element and what it's going to do is it's going to say well we're going to have this overcurrent element and the latch so the latch needs to be a logical one for that protective function to be active. So again, in this logic scheme then, the output of the latch itself is the status, or rather the output from our logic scheme. And again, the input is just the push button. So essentially what I'm saying here is, well, if the latch is originally a zero, so this over here is going to be a logical zero, we're gonna not that over here, so we're gonna invert it, and then we're feeding that into this AND gate on the second input of this AND gate so that whenever we push the button, if the latch was a logical zero to begin with, then we're going to set it. So this over here, the set input becomes a logical one. Now we can do the same thing and we can say, well, if the latch is originally a logical one, so we do not use a NOT gate for the second AND gate over here, and we press the button, so this comes over here, then we feed that into the reset of the latch. So let me get rid of this for now. So now imagine that the latch is a logical one to begin with. So this is a one, this over here is a one. So now if we press the button, this becomes a one, which means that this becomes a one, which means that the reset of the latch becomes a logical one, which means that the latch will now go to zero because we're inputting a logical one into the reset of the latch. So what this is doing then, it's just saying, well, if I press the button and the latch is a zero, then make it a one. If I press it again and it is a one, then make it a zero. And it's going to toggle every time we press the latch. And so this is a very handy thing to do because now we have a way to use the same button to both enable and disable the same relay function. All right, 
So let me get rid of this over here. And now if we were to write this in text form, which we're going to need for the SEL421 example that we're going to take a look at here in a second, we can say, well, let me call this latch one, which again is the output of our logic. We're going to have this AND gate over here. So actually we're going to have two inputs to our latch. So let's say that latch one set and latch one reset. So we have to program both the set and the reset of the latch. So the set, then we can see over here that that's going to be the push button, the edge trigger of the push button and not the status of the latch. So the set again is going to be, let's say push button. And I'm going to say here pulse because that's coming from this pulse from the rising edge trigger. So PV pulse and not latch one. And then the reset is going to be the same thing. So PV pulse and latch one. So instead of being and not, it's going to be just and. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out, okay, how can we program this into the relay itself to essentially make this logic scheme? All right, so now let's see how we can implement this again using an SEL 421 protective relay. So we're going to move into the programming environment for the protective relay, which is called Accelerator Quickset for SEL relays. All right, so what I have here are the default settings for an SEL 421 protective relay. Now, relays always come with default settings, which the manufacturer thinks may be helpful for certain applications. You, of course, have to go through these settings and determine whether you want to use the default settings or change them. Most of the time, though, you will have to modify default settings. Now, for this example, though, the manufacturer already has provided a similar functionality to what we're trying to achieve in the default settings. So what they've done in this case is they have created logic that is the same essentially as the one that we just developed to enable and disable a quote unquote communication scheme in this case. Now they are using push button two and latch two to do this. Now we're gonna see here in a second how we can program this as well as we'll see this in action in real life. Now note that each relay has their own nomenclature for latches, timers, and edge triggers. So you have to look through the instruction manual of the relay to see what specific relays call these components. So for example, an SEL 400 series relay might call a latch different than what an SEL 300 series relay calls it. So you always have to reference the instruction manual for the specific nomenclature for latches, timers, edge triggers, and basically any logic component. Now in this case, since this is an SEL 400 series relay, they call latches PLTs, so protection latch essentially. And then they have XX for the number. So for example, PLT01 would be latch number one. And then the push buttons they call PVX or PVX underscore PUL for pulse. That's essentially gonna be a built-in edge trigger, rising edge trigger that is for a push button. So let's see how they implemented this similar logic to what we developed before. And again, these are the default settings in an SEL421 protective relay. So if I go here under group, set one and protection logic this is what i want to take a look at so again this is logic that the manufacturer already put into the default settings of the relay because they know that you might want to use something like this in your typical application for this specific relay in this case for example since it's a 421 transmission line relay which has pilot scheme or communication scheme capabilities they've already gone ahead and added this enable disable functionality for a communication scheme so you can see here again that we have latch 2 which the nomenclature on a 400 series relay is plt for protection latch and then xx for the number so they're using latch number two and again you can see here that you have the set equation and the reset equation because of course we have two inputs to our latch so this over here is the set equation for latch number two and this over here is the reset equation for latch number two now likewise they're using push button number two and again i mentioned this here before but the pul is basically a built-in rising edge trigger for that push button so essentially this over here the part that i have highlighted is going to be a logical one after push button two is pressed only for a processing cycle. So again, it's essentially a rising edge trigger of push button number two. Now going back to our logic over here, 
we said that we want our set equation to be push button, pose, and not latch, whatever latch we're using. In this case, we're using latch 2. So our equation then should be PB2 underscore pulse or PUL and not PLTO2. So let's go back to the settings now. And you can see that that matches what we have over here. So for the set equation, we have PB2 underscore pulse and not latch 2. And then for the reset equation, we have the same thing, PB2 pulse and latch 2. So again, what this is doing is every time we press push button 2, that's going through a rising edge trigger, which is the PV2 underscore pulse. And if the latch is already set, then it's going to reset it. And if it is not set, then it's going to set it. So in other words, it's going to toggle between a 0 and a 1 every time you press push button 2. And again, this is the same thing as the equation that we have over here. And essentially, this is the logic in a logic diagram form instead of text. So again, this is already programmed into the relay in the default settings. So we're going to use the default settings in this case. Now again, remember that every time you're developing settings, you have to go through the default settings and make sure that it applies to your application. Most of the time it doesn't, so you have to wipe out default logic and create your own logic. But in this case, we can reuse some of the default logic. Now one more thing that they've done over here is the output of this is going to be the latch itself. So what we've defined over here is the set and the reset equations for this latch, but the output is what we want to use. So PLT02, which is the output of the latch, essentially this over here is what we want to use. And one more comment on this, all of these elements over here, so PLT02, PV2 underscore pulse, PLT02 reset set, those are what SEL relays call a relay word bit. Essentially it's a name or a tag for that piece of logic. All right, again, so what they've done over here is they've added on the push buttons. Every push button on the relay has an LED associated with it. So you can see kind of an indication of what the push button is doing. In this case, they've programmed the LED of that push button to be the status of the latch. So what this is going to do then is every time we push a button, the status of the LED, whether that's lit or not, is going to follow the status of the latch itself. So in this case, whenever we enable our communication scheme, the LED should come on. And whenever we disable by pressing the button again, it should come off. All right, so let's see that in real life. All right, so what we have over here is an SEL421 protected relay, which I've programmed with the settings that we just looked at. So what we're expecting here again is that whenever I press push button number two, the LED that's associated with that push button should come on. And whenever I press it again, it should come off. Now in this case, for this relay, we have eight push buttons from left to right. Push buttons one through four are the ones on the left and five through eight are the push buttons on the right. So this over here is push button number two. So again, what we're expecting here is that whenever I press the button, the light comes on. Whenever I press it again, the light comes off. Now notice over here that because we have the rising edge trigger, if I press and hold and then release, the LED status does not change when I release the button. It only changes when I press it because again, we have a rising edge trigger. Now let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see this better. And again, we're taking a look at this LED over here. So whenever I press the button, it goes off. Whenever I press it again, it goes on. And again, because we have that rise in that trigger, if I press and hold and then release, the LED does not change when I release. It changes only when I press it because of course we have a rise in edge trigger. So whenever the push button goes from a logical zero to a logical one. So again, we can use this to basically toggle and enable and disable function. Whenever we press the button, we want to enable the function. Whenever we press it again, we want to disable the function. So this is something very useful that you can use in protective relay logic to enable and disable certain protective functions or logic schemes. In this case, we're essentially enabling and disabling a communications-based scheme.